Happy Thanksgiving weekend, everybody, and thank you all for being here. We are grateful for your presence. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast, a sports ethos presentation hosted by yours truly, Aaron Bruski and FSWA Hall of Famer Steve, Dr. A. Alexander. This is a pod-only episode, so uh, do us a favor. Before you guys get all settled in over there, check out your podcast player. Make sure that you're subscribed to the show. Make sure that you've given us a five-star review, if you don't mind, and uh, any positive feedback or any feedback for that matter. We will take it all. And you can always tweet us directly. I'm at Aaron Bruski, A-A-R-O-N-B-R-U-S-K-I and at Dr. A, D-O-C-K-T-O-R-A or at Ethos Fantasy NBA, uh, either on Twitter, Blue Sky, Threads, we were everywhere now. Um, yeah, like I said, we're doing a pod only episode. We're looking at the week ahead, some streamer action, trying to get you guys ready for next week. So we'll take a deep dive into the schedule and make sure that you guys have everything you need to to be successful there. Quickly, let's shout out our sponsor. This Thanksgiving holiday weekend, why not head to the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for online betting, Bet Online. From the earliest odds to in-game live betting, Bet Online provides you with constant real-time odds and action, the ability to watch games as they happen with the largest selection of odds on everything from football, NBA and college basketball, NHL to UFC and boxing. Head to the website today to see why Bet Online is America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online. The game starts here, Doc. You've had a couple days to soak in all that turkey. How you feeling? Good, good. Good, Ready good, to good. Uh, do a podcast. It's been Hell a, yeah. It's been a heck of a sports uh, bonanza. And Isn't it? It's just going to keep going. Oh, I, you know, it's busy as all hell, and I, I can't, you know, say enough about how busy it really is. I mean, whether it's – if it was just sports, it would be completely nuts. Um, when you add in the travel and just the fullness of being with family and friends and – Everything that comes with this time of year, I can't get enough of it. I'm a little Clark Griswold like that. I was watching the Griswold uh, Christmas family special last night, and and I was thinking um, that would never be made today, and and not probably because it's like salacious or anything, just because I don't think it would work. But let's get out of movies and into the the, the Christmas, upcoming week. The Christmas family special. I think what that's that? the what first, is, the first that time I've what, ever heard it. What is it? What is it called? Oh, holiday man. vacation? Holiday. Is Christmas it holiday vacation? vacation? Christmas vacation. Yeah. And it's sacrilegious to put that thing down because it was such a staple of our, our lives back in the, was it the nineties? I, I don't think when, they, okay. When they kidnap the boss and bring him back to the house, I don't think the boss is going to be like, well, I'll give you a raise. I don't think that's going to happen in this mm. day and age. Mm. Maybe Probably that's my not. pet peeve with the movie. It was a great movie though. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So we're looking at streamers. We're looking at this schedule in the upcoming week. There's a lot going on with it. So, you know, we've had some kind of vanilla schedules over the last couple of weeks. This one's really interesting. So uh, in terms of volume of games, we have 20 of the teams playing four games this upcoming week and 10 of them playing three games. So it's a pretty decent volume week, not over the top like some weeks. But if you've got players that have three games, you're kind of up against it since two thirds of the league is going to be playing four games as far as games, um, you know, uh, low volume games. You know, Monday and uh, Wednesday, you've got some low volume days. You got four games on Monday, six games on Wednesday. And then on Friday and Saturday, you also have seven games for each of those days. So there's a lot of streaming potential for those two days. Thursday is loaded up with eight games. So that's a little bit different, but also presents some opportunities here. Then Sunday, we got 14 games. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, as far as low traffic days, there are, you know, with, uh, days if we define them as five or fewer games in a day, we have eight teams that have action in those days. So, so we're going to kind of focus a lot on those teams here today. 22 teams don't have games in these low traffic days which helps us sort of narrow our focus to these eight teams, which are the Lakers, Hawks, Pelicans, Celtics, Bulls, Heat, Wolves, and Nets. Okay, so we'll get back to all that here in a quick second. Monday and Wednesday are really interesting days and have interesting teams to target. And it's going to be kind of a repeat of the information that I just gave. But on Mon Monday and Wednesday, you have the Lakers, you have the Hawks, you have Boston, Miami, Minnesota and Brooklyn, where if you can get players from these teams to stream, you've got players that are playing on light days. So let's start 
with those teams right now. With the Lakers, for example, are there any players that you think sort of would be available in a lot of leagues or, or a good amount of leagues that you would be targeting for either Monday or Wednesday? Well, of course, uh, Patrick Spencer is at the very top of everybody's. Oh, no, no, no. He's no, no, no. That's yeah, he's a warrior. That's wrong. You, you just got Pat Spencer on the brain. Just admit just, it. I do. I he looks like your college roommate, and he showed up to the game with a hacky sack. I can't get enough of him. Before we do that, I just want to say that um, the Boston Celtics have two back-to-backs next week. That means Al Horford probably looking at a two-game week, right? The Miami Heat have two back-to-backs. What's that mean for Jimmy Butler? Probably mm. not good. And the other team with two back-to-backs is the Pelicans. Um, so with, with all the injuries that they have, you have to wonder if some of those guys even return and start playing, will they play in a back-to-back? Probably not. So I think back-to-backs is really important to look at um, when we're doing this. But as far as the Lakers go, I mean, Rui Hachimura might be available in some leagues. Um I wonder if Dalton Connect might be available in your league. If so, I I think those are guys you want to pick up. And then Max Christie, we had a Max Christie sighting the other night. So super deep league, maybe look at him. They they can get rid of Cam Reddish. I would like to see if Max Christie could be a thing. They've put a lot of kind of mental thought into Max Christie as an organization, and he hasn't done much until lately. But – yeah, no. Um, Rui, if Dalton Connect's available, I, that's a super interesting one. And then even like D'Angelo Russell, if he got somehow dropped, if you're in a sh- more shallow league and you know whoever's working with D'Angelo Russell is just tired of it, he had a decent line uh, late last week. Th- there's top 50 potential in an eight cat format for him somewhere, some way, somehow, if he gets traded or if maybe in Los Angeles something breaks in his favor. I understand the going is bad right now, and I understand the reasons for that are probably re- really legit. He's on the trade block. He's unhappy. They probably don't want to play him too much because they want to make sure he doesn't get hurt so they can deal him for something. Um, maybe I could poke some holes in some of that, but, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of intrigue there. The next team up that um, has action on Monday and Wednesday is Atlanta. What about Atlanta? How are you feeling on streamers out of Atlanta right now? I think Zach Risa Shade. Dan Bogdanovich and DeAndre Hunter are all um, are all worth a look on those days for sure. Uh, Bogdan has been really good. DeAndre Hunter has been oddly good. Like, where was this DeAndre Hunter when we needed him? That's <laughs> weird. You know, I, maybe it's because he's playing next to so many rangy, lengthy players that are athletic that it it, it uh actually um slides or it actually improves his game like that he what he does well with his athleticism gets done it's even um more accentuated playing on the same floor as those guys i'm reaching with that but um you know he's, he's been a guy in the past that at one point in time had mid-round potential in fantasy leagues at one point in time he was starting to look like a premium uh youngster in the league and then injuries really took him back I think any time my goal for these streaming shows is going to be, can we nail streamers that also have long-term upside and that's Bogdan Bogdanovich in a nutshell. It's um, you know, for him to have a, a week of rust is, is not surprising for him to play at a top 75 level when he's on the floor. That is not surprising. So I think uh, you know, for me, it's, it's must roster for bogey going forward, unless it's a pretty shallow league and uh, top 75 is only what plays in that league um on the boston side or pardon me moving on to boston i should say do you have any streamers in this game i mean you mentioned the back-to-back uh, so Porzingis being um you know probably resting on a back-to-back in this situation at some point in time we don't know which game the rest will come in but um pull up their schedule real quick to see how that so there's, actually breaks there's out. Two, but there's two back-to-backs for Boston. So that means Porzingis, Horford are only going to play two games next week probably. Um, Jalen Brown may sit one. Jason Tatum may sit one, especially if they get a dog. Are you you're pulling up schedule? Slowly, but yes. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> One of the fun things that Clark Griswold over here is going to do is throw his computer out the window at full speed, and I'll film it for you guys. Peyton Pritchard is automatic, man. You know, playing all four games, doesn't matter if they're back-to-backs. He's been great. He's probably rostered in a lot of leagues. He should be. But if he's not, um, he's like Bogey Bogdanovich. I mean, season-long value and a potential streamer for this week. Yeah, I don't know if the schedule gods are going to get my computer to operate any, any faster anytime soon, so I'll rely Let's on the great Andre I've got, I've, got it, I've got it right here. You, you guys, you guys will will carry me this episode, but uh, yeah, no, so we, I, we the, got, the basics uh, are the basics. It's like uh, Peyton Pritchard, yes. Um, will uh, Nemesh Keita have a good game in there? Maybe. I think what he's looked at um, looked like the last couple of games has been interesting. It's a little too late for for his own season long value, but he showed that he can at least make some noise in the box score. Um, so they've got Hauser. a Hauser. They play Sunday and Monday. So Sunday, December 1st, and Monday, December 2nd. That's Cleveland, Florida Miami. Team. It's Cleveland, Miami, so both are and interesting then, teams. And then Wednesday is their non-back-to-back. And that's I wouldn't point. have a read on the Cleveland-Miami thing. Do they want to put their best players out there against Cleveland and send a message, or do they want to just slow play that and maybe try to beat them without their best guys and get into their head that way? That will be interesting. What was the first, yeah. the early side of the week? Cleveland and then Miami. That's this Sunday, Monday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the the back end of the week? Back to the back. Back end like? is Mil- is Milwaukee and Memphis. So there's nothing easy about uh, about that week for them. Yeah, maybe they sit the guys against Memphis if they want to. It you never know with this stuff. Like, does a team? I always think that if there's like a, a future finals matchup or future you know conference finals matchup, that a team might want to try to send a message, you know, and, and you, what I've seen a lot over the years is like, especially the favorite, you know, the, the team that's on top will, will say, you know what, we're just not even going to play our guys in this quote unquote battle of the, you know, the future finals. And so you just never know which one, which one they're going to sit in. So we'll have well, to wait. Cleveland, and see. Cleveland just got beat by Atlanta. Um, so that was, that was pretty wild. And I, I would think that Boston just wants to come out and roll people and just, I don't know that they care I, that much. That's probably right. And and that would fit Joe Missoula's style. Um, and in Cleveland, what goes up must come down. And Cleveland, they, they're getting all their stories out. They're getting their, like, Kenny Atkinson for coach of the year. And, um, you know, uh, uh, Donovan Mitchell stuff. They're, they're, they're slamming my guy, J.B. Bickerstaff, on his way out the door. Not providing reasons why. Shout out athletic just uh saying guys uh at any rate the uh the boston um back-to-back should yield some big numbers sam hauser hasn't been good yet um this season and i don't know if it's the back issue or just kind of not really needing to be good um is one of the concerns if you were a sam hauser backer as i was for very deep formats entering the season but he has yet to have a breakout game and i kind of think it's coming at some point soon um looking at miami for potential streamer options. It feels like they they got a few there. Uh, Duncan uh, Robinson, who else do you like out of Miami to try to sneak some value in there? You know, this this dude, Pell Larson. Who I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie, dude. I'm, I'm not. I'm not you, 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 you have a reason to watch Miami now. I'm not that up on, the, on who Pell Larson is, but... He had 14 points and five boards last Sunday. Um, I was watching myself some checks notes. Al Larson. (laughs) Eight points, four boards, three assists on Tuesday. I thought, you know what? Am I going to fall for yet another Miami Heat basketball player? And maybe. It's like they just get good ball players, and then, you know, they'll, they'll be good in Miami or somewhere else. But I don't know. Maybe. I'm not recommending him as a as a pickup. They're fully screen. healthy, kind of. You know, we'll see what pops up on in the injury report between now and then, so to speak. Um, but they're kind of healthy in Miami right now, so, with the exception of Kevin Love. So yeah. um, Duncan Robinson and ha- Duncan Robinson and Jaime Hawkes are are the big two, I think. 
Probably, yeah. Uh, Minnesota, it's going to be an interesting week for these guys. Uh, what about streaming action there? I mean, Dante DiVincenzo, if he's available, he's got to be picked up. My my opinion. My opinion. Do you have a, count, a contrary opinion, sir? I mean, I just haven't seen it. You, I don't you, know you, what's you, happening. You were you low on my guy, Dante. He's been terrible. It's, it's been horrible. You know my feelings on this, but yes, he has. It's, I'm literally blaming D D Dante's play on another human being. <laughs> well, uh, Julius Randle's this year's um, Kyle Kuzma. I felt so like, bad. It took you a episodes. year to get over Kyle Kuzma injuring Jalen Johnson. Oh, I'm still and, not over it. And now Julius Randle has replaced all of your angst. It's, you know, I'm not even a timber. I wonder what Rick's feeling like right now. Has Rick turned on Julius? Because he was pretty pro Julius at the beginning of the season. No, I think he likes Julius. He's still he's still with man. I don't know. Rick, well, is, a, I'll ask him Rick, is, Rick is a loyal, awesome dude. Um, yeah, no, uh, Minnesota, like, okay, so Dante's got to be picked up. Nikhil Alexander Walker might get a shot. I mean, maybe Nas Reed's even available in one of your leagues. That shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. I think the knee issue is not an issue. I think Jaden um, McDaniels, Jaden McDaniels might be available. He might be, and he's been pretty good. Um, he had it, 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 he had a nice push where he was going like top 80, 90, and then he had a he had an off game. He's been top 140 for the season. Um, I just I wonder about like, is this the week that they come together and say, all right, we're going to play as a team, or are they just going to keep falling? further uh brooklyn well, for, for people who don't know um and anthony edwards totally called out the whole squad mm. so yeah. they're either gonna come together and get things right or it's gonna get worse like it, there's it's it's sort of like he you drew know, a line he drew a line in the sand and you're either with me or you're not i wonder if they hate rudy gobert in that locker room if it's not even like if, when they're talking about this stuff they're like not even talking about julius randall like they're just cool with whatever julius randall's doing out there on the floor and they're just like get this rudy gobert guy off Dude, our if team. any if anybody looks soft on that team so far this year it's oh. rudy gobert it's everybody's rudy just gobert. going at him so i don't hard. see the rudy gobert defenders out there on the internet anymore i think that's interesting yeah like I just... it, 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 they, they he's like the de best defensive player of the freaking history of the game practically and, and assist screen assists are like everything. And now he all of a sudden gets embarrassed every night, just and, and his by his own team. <laughs> maybe it's not Julius Randall. Maybe it's Rudy by Gobert. Everyone. By everyone. Uh, Brooklyn is, is an interesting target on this uh, Monday, Wednesday sort of side of the streaming uh, strategy here. Like everybody's a suspect. You know, like you could almost pick any name on this roster that's playing and make a case for them. Who are the guys that you like the best from a streaming perspective heading into Monday and Wednesday, Doc? Ben Simmons. <laughs> and I'm serious. I know you are. It seems that's... weird. He's going to go off on Monday. Just go with it, man. Ben Simmons. <laughs> um, Jalen Wilson, if he's playing. Zaire Williams, uh, Trendon Wofford, and, and, and Tyrese, there's Martin. Tyrese, there's Tyrese yeah. Martin. You're burying the lead, Doc. Well, I mean, he's buried on the depth chart. Can we really expect him to do that again? I mean, I think the best bets for success, my order is Ben Simmons, uh, Jalen Wilson, Zaire, and Wofford, and then Martin. What's your order? I, you know, it's funny because like, okay, let's say Cam doesn't play. Cam Johnson, that is. Uh, Cam Thomas is out for a bit, but like, I think Cam Johnson will play. I, I got a, just a sense that they want to get their games in now versus down the road. But like, if Cam Johnson doesn't play, Tyrese Martin, he, I don't know. I don't know if I get this quote right, but I think after the game, he, he said, Maybe he got relayed Kevin Durant's quotes where they say, hey, we don't see this. We don't even know who this guy is. That's probably why he was open so much. Uh, Tyrese went for 30 points, 10 of 13 shooting, eight threes. And not much else, guys. Like four rebounds, two or two assists, no steals or blocks. So this is this is really, you know, some of these other guys are probably better picks.
But Martin was like, well, they know my name now. And I was like, what a thing for a young player who nobody knows to say. Like, how did he say that? I want to get like the audio on that. Did he say it with a bunch of confidence? Because if he did, and, and he's that dude, go Tyrese Martin one more time. Um, but yeah, my order would be like, deep breath um i mean schroeder if he's playing and and you know that he's going to be the top dog there uh cam right after him um probably dfs then um probably to your point earlier ben simmons after that i would probably go like trendon watford let's assume that jalen wilson plays and he's banged up i'll probably go Martin ahead of him just to see if we can get lucky there. And then uh, Jalen Wilson after that. Did I fit Zaire in there? Probably not. I probably have Zaire over Ben Simmons in that ranking on the fly. You're, uh, You're nuts. I, it's, it's, it's nuts all the way around. So um, that in your Monday and Wednesday segment of the week could help get you some streaming action going there. And, and as you mentioned, the back-to-backs, I do think they're consequential for those teams that are especially banged up. So that was an interesting kind of back-to-back uh, revelation. We got nine teams without back-to-backs, and we have 11 teams, uh, pardon me, six te- nine teams without back-to-backs. Yeah, that's where I want to finish up with this. We have 11 teams with three games between Thursday and Sunday, and two of those teams, Atlanta and Minnesota, have four games this week. So just kind of those, those, those two teams, Atlanta, and Minnesota, I think you're going to get real good performances out of those teams this week. So like Dante DiVincenzo, if he's available, I think this is going to be the week that showcases what, what he can be if things get ironed out. And I think your guys in Atlanta, like they've been playing a ton of minutes and getting a ton of, you know, basketball under their belt, guys like Dyson Daniels. Jalen Johnson, um, and then um, even Trey Young kind of, you know, getting, you know, uh, whatever the rest he needed was under his belt, like getting four games this week with a day off for the most part between those games. I think that is pretty good for those guys. You might see like some really big numbers out of those guys this week, but let's focus on these 11 teams that have three games to end Thursday through Sunday. And if you want to fashion the first half of the week um, as, a, as a piece of strategy, as we just described, and then turn in the middle of the week and pivot, if you can, to some of these teams, let's outline a few guys that we like. So there are 11 teams with three games. We'll go through them one by one. Um, if you got a name, Doc, feel free to shout it out. I got a couple names on my side. And Charlotte, anybody that you think rises to the threshold of streamer potential? And again, we're talking about Thursday through Sunday. Thursday these, through these Sunday. Teams, so we're really far ahead, but that's what we teams, want to do around here. And these teams play three times Thursday to Sunday, which is a ton. So yep. there's there's a Cody Martin, who I think everybody is kind of intrigued by at this point. There's Josh Green, who no one is intrigued by, but he's starting. And then there's a, I don't know how to say this dude's name, Tijon Salon. And he's a rookie, but he's playing well. And uh, I think he's, out of these guys, he's the one I'm most intrigued by. Yeah, I like Cody, but I understand that the Cody's not getting it done in anything but defensive stats. So that's where I've, I've actually made an ad of Cody Martin in 200-player format, so I'll be really excited for that stretch um, Thursday to Sunday. Let's get to Chicago. Who would you rather have, Io Desunmu or Jalen Smith? For that stretch, I uh, assume it's not close. Yeah, Jalen Smith's been disappointing. Just can't quite. I mean, he gets you a couple numbers here and there, just enough to give you a little taste. And then, and then he gets none, hurt. Then nothing. Yeah, and he's just proverbially on the injury report. How about Cleveland? Um, I mean, when all five guys are in the top sixty over the last couple of weeks, it's really hard to find a streamer. I think he's a must roster player the rest he of the is. way. He I don't is a, know. a must roster. Uh, shout out to producer Andre Lemus. He was begging me to uh, consider this man as a uh, as a B one fifty combatant, and 
it was uh, it was hard to get on the Ty Jerome bandwagon. I just had so much in the past vault of like this couldn't be a thing, but it could be a thing. And he's been shooting sixty percent this season. I, I I hope it doesn't go to the other side of the pendulum and go down to like forty percent. That will bum me out because I, I really I he's good. He's been awesome. Maybe Karis Karis Levert. Karis Levert, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had I had my eyes for Craig Porter Jr. as uh, the next Michael Jordan, you know, but, but, but that didn't pan out. It was ruined by Ty Jerome. Um, Karis Levert might be a be a low key sleeper. He was pretty good before going down. It's hard to get behind him with injuries, and then the aforementioned Ty Jerome issue. So I could Coro. I could I maybe Coro. Yeah. Worth yeah, he's actually he's picked up the pace a little bit. Uh, Denver, you got anybody other than Russell Westbrook? Uh, no, nope. Yeah, it's, it's I getting don't. tight. I wonder I, if I don't uh, trust Julian Strother to do anything. Yeah, he's been really quiet, and then uh, he, he's already on rosters that Peyton Watson. <clears throat> But I wonder if this is the week that maybe even like the team says, hey, we know, Peyton, you're not going to play when Aaron Gordon gets back. So why don't you get out there and get a little bit more offense <clears throat> than you've had in the uh, or that you will be having. So kind of a goodbye present on his way out. And then maybe that's even a good question to tackle here on the show. Do you think that Peyton Watson can keep it going with Aaron Gordon back? Or is that no, just too far? I, I do like I do like his potential. Um, I think there's he's an upside guy. He's he's fun. He's young, but I just think that this Denver team is so set in what they do that there's no room. There's no room for Peyton Watson to come in and really make a big impact because they trust Aaron Gordon so much with that with that position. I just don't think they're gonna. I just don't think there's a window there. It's, it's it's hard to when you look at his full season production he's at about top 170 when you include some of those early games where he wasn't doing so well he's had a lot of the season without aaron gordon so to be top 170 like a fully realized peyton watson might be like top 100 in this configuration i do like his upside in future seasons it's it's great to see you know somebody at his um playing style be able to get those kinds of blocks but uh, yeah, it's going to be tough sledding for him going forward. Let's look at Golden State. They got three games in four days during that stretch. Um, <laughs> with certainly a lot of candidates that aren't rostered. What's should uh, get, we should get plenty of Pat Spencer minutes. You are you and Pat Spencer, man. Dude, I just can't believe what Steve Kerr is doing. Like, where is Brandon Pajemski? Where's Buddy Heald? Where's Kyle Anderson? Like, you know, I was where's Trace Jackson it. Davis. Where's I Moses respect Moody? it. I respect it, Doc. Here's why. Where's Gary Payton? Steve Kerr is clearly in the effort portion of his career. He doesn't care about nothing right now. And he, oh, we didn't even mention this the other day on the last show because we had so much going on. They're winning. Yeah. So he gets to keep doing this. It's a fantasy nightmare. He's almost, dare I say, morphing into a little bit of a Don Nelson. Now. I mean, he is. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I think he is. We'd have to drink a lot more for that. Uh, He's Pajemski. Not bad. He doesn't wear fish ties, but. <laughs> Wait, was, uh, was Nelly rocking the fish ties? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. remember that one. I, I don't remember a lot about the Nelly area. I don't, I don't remember the fish ties. I do remember him, you know, sporting the gut and the uh, coming out of the bottom of the, the sweater during games that may have been more than his milwaukee tenure but yeah he was he used to wear um a tie that was like a long trout or a long <laughs> bass hey you know what to each their own nelly is a nelly's a man he looks like a like a character from uh what is it the the biker show that i never watched on fx um Hanging out in Hawaii, smoking his weed. Shout out, Nelly. You're the man. Pajemski, Trace Jakes, Jackson Davis, Lindy Waters. Who you got? You think, I mean, Buddy Heald, if he's available, I think. Like, I, I talked about him a lot in the last couple of weeks as a buy low. And, you know, he's top 90 value in the season. It's It's been, like, top 200 or so, maybe top 175 over the last, say, week or two. Like, I would say Buddy Heald is um, 
I think you, you immediately roster him. I don't think you wait unless you're in a very shallow league. Um, the, he just survives. We've said this a million times. He just survives that Buddy Hield. But uh, outside of Buddy Hield, um, which one would you most like to have out of that esteemed group of fantasy producers? Dude, I just Googled Don Nelson fish tie images, <laughs> and you would not believe the insane. I, 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 the Fed's knocking on your door. <laughs> the variety and the number of fish ties that dude wore is insane and they're they're crazy and this should have been i can't believe we don't we don't talk about this more in the history of the nba like nobody else was wearing fish ties nobody's wearing fish ties you know, today okay if you're if you're a loved one in my life that's watching the show that's what i want for christmas is a fish tie <laughs> maybe a fish tie with nelly's face on it and I want you all to go Google Don Nelson fish ties when you're done listening to the show. All right. Um, Brandon, yeah. or I'll go with yeah, Buddy yeah. Heald. Buddy I'm going to go with Pat, whatever his name is. I'm going to go with Buddy Heald, number one. Uh, well, actually, if Andrew Wiggins is not rostered in your league, he should be. Then I'm going Buddy Heald. Then I'm going Brandon Pajemski. Then I'm going Lindy Waters. Then I'm going Moses Moody. Then I'm going Gary Payton. Then I'm going my man, Pat Spencer. The, the great Pat Spencer. If you don't know, now you know. But I'm going to say that I got Lindy Waters maybe the highest out of all of them. Whoa, I had a buddy? Not buddy. No, buddy I think is just must roster. Buddy's my dude. I, I So Buddy and Wiggins are must roster. And then it comes down to Pajemski or Lindy. Yeah, and Pajemski's at least had some signs of life. I, look, if I wanted to get like a home run, I would go Pajemski. But I think Lindy is going to get you like at least two, if not three defensive uh, cash counting threes and three steals and block stats. I think he's going to get you that. Um, everything else is chopped liver. But uh, yeah, no, Golden State, it's, it's it, it, the key thing for Golden State is when they start losing, and that will happen, they're not that good. That's going to probably mark the time for change. Warriors 12 and 6, powered by Spencer and Waters. But you heard it here. You you know it now. Uh, Memphis, I, Memphis has just got a list of guys that should theoretically be available. When we look at um, Jake LaRavia was available in like 90% of Yahoo leagues the other day. Yeah. I mean, he, that, that's he, probably my top pickup. He should be rostered everywhere. Jake LaRavia. Uh, Jay Huff, I'd fight. I'd fight over that too, because I think Jay Huff could be um, better than Jake LaRavia. He's starting to creep up too. He had 20 minutes in his last game. Now Edie's coming back at some point here. That'll complicate life for him a little bit. We, almost, think, we think Scottie Pippen should be rostered yep. in all leagues. And then what about Marcus Smart? It's worth a shot, right? If you're staring at the waiver wire and you only got a couple of these names available and Marcus Smart's one of them, why not? It's not like they want him to be bad. And Desmond Bain is only playing 27 minutes a game this year. I'm not fully convinced that, that Bain's healthy. And is, the only, it, is, only Santi Aldama, is Santi Aldama a must roster player at this point? I think so. He feels like it. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't done anything to say no on his part. And then Brandon Clark is coming on, right? Or were they having these like, random Brandon Clark sightings? he's been a top 175 guy since like the last week or so. And it's, it's, it's just like every guy on the roster for Memphis has got a fantasy case to be made. And then you got your starters, you know, who theoretically, and actually J Jaron Jackson Jr. is doing great. You know, Morant, obviously big name guy. It's just fun in Memphis for fantasy leagues. Let's get to new Orleans. Deep side, I think the, I think the point of this show is there are tons of streaming potential uh, for these Thursday through Sunday games this week between tons. Brooklyn, Brooklyn and Memphis, and Golden State. Like there are tons of guys. It's you trying should to find be, the hot one. Yeah, yeah. You, if if you had like two or three streaming slots and you could play the Monday through Wednesday game, and just know that you're going to dump that action, you know, probably a good time to mention that there are three teams: Brooklyn, Detroit, and the Clippers who only have one game in this late week stretch. But if you could, if you could, 
identify two, three slots on your roster to get in on the Monday and Wednesday action, then turn around and spin it and then get the three of four games in the back end of the week. You have a lot of momentum in the games played discussion. And, and so you should not have any shortage of options. You, know, you look at New Orleans as, as we kind of move through the last of this teams with three games at the back end of the week, I mean, you're going to have access to guys like Brandon Boston, Jordan Hawkins might be getting back up to speed by that time. Um, who knows who will not be playing? You know, you got back to back action as well for this team. So you got Trey Murphy might not play in one of those games. Brandon Ingram might not play in either of those games, but definitely not one of those games. Um, no Zion. I mean, it's the kind of Eves Misi has been sort of sliding a little bit. He's in the top 200 now. He might be available at some point. Like, I think he would be kind of an, almost an auto pickup given his potential, even though there's, there's things about his game that I don't like this season. Like, I don't know if the efficiency will be there, but you got at least Brandon Boston and Jordan Hawkins to work with. Am I missing on anybody in New Orleans that folks could be keeping an eye out for? I mean, maybe Alfred Payton, but DeJounte and CJ McCollum are both healthy right now. So probably not Alfred Payton, but stranger things have happened. Boston. Javante Green. Javante Green. Yeah. He's he's been able to do it his entire career when given the minutes. Javante Green, that's the the rub is the minutes. Let's get to Phoenix. Uh Grayson Allen. I think he's available in a ton of leagues. It brings a smile to Doc's face anytime I say his name because he knows how much love I have for Grayson Allen. How, how much you want Grayson Allen and I'm gonna will this to be good. Good. I'm gonna you trying. Friggin, I'm I'm manifesting abundance. You were trying on really the show. Hard. You guys can't see my hands, but they're moving and I'm manifesting. Yeah, no, I mean, like this is perfect timing, right? Like he's shooting 10% below his numbers from last year. He's had enough time to get the kind of the, the legs under his belt or, or his legs underneath him. He's, uh, you know, the bounce back could hit right during a three and four games stretch. So that's my recommendation is to try to get on that. Mine is Royce O'Neal, who I doubt. Who's been better. Week, every every week, week I mentioned Grace now, and you mentioned Royce, Al- Royce O'Neal. At this time, I mentioned Royce O'Neal, and he continues to not get it done. But he, he, he's he got could to get happen. it done. It's Royce O'Neal? I, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's been top 125. That's good. Not yeah, great, I mean, but it's good. I, so he still hasn't had that pop game, but he is still wearing the pearl necklace. Sacramento, Keon Ellis might not be available, or, or pardon me, he might, I think he's available in a ton of leagues. Uh, Jay Crowder might even be worth a look. Like Jay Crowder, I don't know if he'll play all f- three games, but it's possible. I think they really like Jay Crowder in Sacramento. That's the, kind of my takeaway from all of this. He might get you nine points, two threes, a steal, and some boards, and like two assists, you know, times three. And that might outperform a couple guys that have one game. So Jay Crowder could be on your list. Keon, I think, is a great time to get on the bandwagon with Keon with that kind of a stretch. I wonder if team. with I wonder if with the Rosen out, if we're finally going to see Kevin Herter do something because yeah. it's been rough. It's been rough. I think with Herter, I think he and the team knows that he's better coming off the bench. And I think that inst- once they get that like kind of like understood and then they all kind of lean into it a little bit more, it's going to be tough sledding for him. Um but once they get their roles figured out, I think Kevin Herter will kind of go back to being a top 125 guy uh, just on the basis of playing next to players who can get him the ball for threes. San Antonio, uh, Keldon Johnson, Zach Collins, Charles Bassey. Anybody else that you can think of for three and four stretch? Harry Barnes, player of the week. Harry Barnes got a player of the week award in 2024. I cannot believe that. Uh, Washington Shubini should be should be rostered everywhere. Yep. Yep. And Stefan Castle. I'm I love him. So yep. Uh what about Washington? Like uh Keyshawn um, George has got to have a good game in there, right? I don't know, man. If Kuzma's out, Keyshawn should go off. Bub Carrington, maybe getting off the Schneid in that stretch. Maybe Malcolm Brogdon's finally hurt by then. Like maybe 
maybe Brogdon's available, sitting there available in your league, and he's actually producing. I mean, if, if you grab Brogdon for a three and four stretch, he plays in three games and produces, you got to be feeling pretty smart at the end of that. Um, what about Carrington? Are you going to try to lean into this week and try to grab him where he's dropped, like for a longer term play? I don't know, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he is going to play a lot more in the second half. I mean, Brogdon's going to get hurt. Brogdon's eventually going to not be starting, and Bub is going to start. So I, I'd recommend stashing Bub, but not not a must don't stash. stash him if it's going to if it's going to hurt your chances to win games and and make the playoffs. Right. So not quite a luxury a luxury stash. Yep. 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 All right, guys, that's some options for you at the back end of the week. I want to hear about if you guys are able to kind of swim through this and grab a bunch of guys on the front end of the week, then turn around and replace them in the back end of the week. And if, if you guys have a great streaming story about how that it all panned out for you, please definitely message us, tweet us, join our Discord. Let us know there. The link for Discord's in the show notes. Subscribe to this pod, guys, because we're doing content like this, and we got a finger up in the air. I'm what going all in on Micah Potter. Of the Utah oh. Jazz. I'm just saying. You're just going to throw that out there at the end. You wanted to hear a successful streaming story. I'm just going to free. I'm doing it ahead of time. I love it. Mike Potter. And and you know what? It's The, 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 the ground is fertile in Utah for that kind of a thing. So uh, you, you heard it from Doc. Carry on. First. I'm out. And yes, yes. Just, uh, we want to hear these stories. Get into our Discord. Please let us know. Um, you know, subscribe to the live show on YouTube, you know, follow all of the Twitter accounts, get over to blue sky and threads where our Twitter accounts are basically the same names as we have over here. But, uh, yeah, we want to hear from you guys, get as much feedback as possible. We want to interact, get your questions answered both on the show and outside of the show in places like discord. So please do follow us all over the place. And that's going to do it for us here today on fantasy NBA today presented by bet online, a sports ethos jam. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, be well. Swimming.